Recently, it's been reported that up to 10,000 churches in the USA will be closing their doors every year. This is Leading Center. He says the number of religiously unaffiliated Americans has jumped over the last decade. Protests started at about noon today in Seattle, but turned destructive. Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. I remember back on the good old days on the farm, the hum of irrigation pumps running in the morning, the cool breeze of the early morning air, the call of the tractor it still beckons me. Although the memories hold dear to me now, there was a time it wasn't so great. But I look back now and I smile at it all. It made me who I am today. So when your dad calls you and asks you to come and spend the day with him as he interviews his old pastor, he wants you to shoot some film footage for him, have some good food, just spend a good time together. Definitely, yeah. I'm moving around the room and I'm holding my cameras and I'm trying to get the right shots. I'm listening to this conversation and I couldn't help but just kind of be overwhelmed by just the spirit that was in the conversation and, and how best I could explain that was really just listening to them talk about their old days and listening to them talk about how God moved and I just started to kind of really just really just opening my ears to the conversation. I dove my heart into it and wanted to hear more. I wanted to hear more about the salvation. I wanted to hear more about my grandpa's salvation. I wanted to hear more about how, you know, the ministry of the church that he was a part of. I wanted to hear it all. I wanted to see and hear what, uh, what and where I came from. I want to see how they, you know, what they experienced. I wanted to feel that experience. My dad always made sure that we went to church. That was something that there was no question about that. I did not have a choice. Dad, dad he says, you're, you're going to go. And um, well, we all get a suit and a tie, get Sunday shoes. We had our special Sunday shoes, and we would put our Sunday shoes on and our clothes, and away we would go in our suit and ties and go off to church on Sunday. That was very important to dad. It was through my dad's diligence and my mom's prayers and, and that we eventually found Jesus Christ. I came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It was during an evening service. And um, I remember a bunch of kids had gone forward and I wanted to go forward. I knew that hell was real. I knew if I did not make it right with God, I was going to be lost. And so I was standing outside the room where the pastor was dealing with the kids. And someone came up to me and says, why are you standing here? And I says, well, I want to go in. I want to get saved. And they said, well, here, just go on in. I was too scared to go in. And um, as a little nine-year-old boy, I ventured in. And the pastor looked up at me. Pastor Mayhew looked up at me. And he says, what you doing here? I says, I want to get saved. And that was a transforming night that night. And I thank God for the glory. I remember laying in my head, laying in my bed that night as, as we were preparing to go to bed. Dad came in the room and he looked at me and we were talking about it and he says, Ron, he says, you'll never have to worry about going to hell again. I'll never forget those words from my dad. He says, you'll never have to worry about going to hell again. I slept like a baby that night. It was such a relief and such a release on me.
every story for a Christian has a beginning, and that beginning is when they had that time where they came to know Christ as their Savior, that moment of repentance, that understanding our need for Christ, that deep, deep desire for something more than ourselves that only can be found in Christ alone. What was it that people loved so much about this place? It had to be the building. Nowadays, we love buildings. We gotta have the right facilities. Things gotta look wonderful. Trimmed hedges, beautiful landscape. Had to be the building. Uh, the first impression I got from the building was this, this place must be haunted. It was just old and um, it, it, when, when we went, it was probably about 50, 60 years old already. Hmm. It had a smell to it. It had a smell of just old. But yet there was a wonderful spirit there with the people. These people had something there. And my dad sensed it too. My mom sensed it. It was not something that would attract you physically wise. See, that's how I felt the first Sunday when we were asked to come. We drove in, I thought, <laughs> you know? wow. But then when I went inside, right? the people, it, it was wonderful. And I remember again how the church would always seem full on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night. A good, good spirit, a great spirit, a spirit that I am so very thankful for, that wonderful old building. Thou my great Father, and I thy true Son, Thou It wasn't, it wasn't the old building, it was the people. It was the people, yeah. all right. The people, the, the church is the people. Mm -hmm. The world today is burning itself. It's consuming the hearts of many and creating a great despair. Little do they know that the one answer, the one hope, is a light that is Christ. The world needs to see that light. But how will the people see? Matthew 5.16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We can look fancy, decorate ourselves, and give the world an appearance of wonder in how we carry ourselves. But my friends, we are not the salvation of the world, but the bearers of the light. God does not need fancy and marvelous. He just needs that one light that one candle in the darkness that's willing to shine. In this life, we can burn and live to share the gospel. It is Christ that is the hero and not ourselves. 
He is the one who must be glorified, and we are in need of him. In a changing world, in a day of uncertainty and fear, God has not changed. His heart longs for the souls of the lost and dying world. We cannot lose the days where we beg God for the souls of our friends and family members. We get one life in this world, and we have the task before us to let the light shine, which is Christ Jesus. Have we lost the passion of winning the dying in the lost world? This is the light we must pass and continue to live. For hatred has never been the fuel that worked the righteousness of God. We must pass the light and the glory of God. This is our purpose. Learn anything? Uh, I enjoyed listening to the stories about the church. I just felt like God has something to say here. God has something for me to show. And I wanted to really just relay that same spirit to, to everyone. We live in a time where this world is in strong need of Jesus Christ like it's never been before. I think one of the greatest successes of the church was the prayer and the love that drew Pastor Byers' mom and dad into the church and eventually they were both saved. So they came up for Thanksgiving. And uh, they, whenever they came, they always came to church and heard me preach. And uh, I remember I gave an invitation that morning, and, and uh, we had two ladies that came for baptism. And boy, I was happy with that, you know. And I was just ready to close. And I looked, and there on my left come my sweet little mother, just walking down that aisle, oh, just real slow, you know, just walking <laughs> with her head down. And, she come up. By the time she got to the edge of the <laughs> pews there, you know, you or the, the seat that had chairs then, and I just picked her up and I said, oh, Mom. <laughs> oh, Mom. She's just a oh, little lady. And, and we got down on her knees right there, and she prayed and asked Jesus to be her Savior. We walked out, and it's like the church hadn't been dismissed. Everybody was still standing there <laughs> crying. And... Uh, I looked at my dad and I says, I said, wouldn't you like to get saved? He put his face in his hands. He just leaned over that window sill and he st started sobbing. Wow. I said, well, let's go up and, and get saved. And so I led him up to the prayer room. And we got on our knees. And <laughs> I tell you, he prayed and asked Jesus He's to save brother. him. What a and <laughs> so they went home. <laughs> yeah, they, did. they went back to Petersburg, Indiana. And they called all the family, <laughs> called their friends, said, we got saved today. <laughs> the world is in need. It's in need of salvation. God's people are in need, in need of a revival. Have we forgotten? Have we shown the light? What well, was the best memory you had of it? The verse of God said, I not unto thee that if thou shalt believe, thou, that if thou mayest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Tell me your story about leading this young man to the Lord the other day. And I pray, I pray next to him, and he pray next to him. And it's my belief. I believe that boy got saved that night. I mean, how did that feel for your first time? It felt, ama it felt amazing. One of the greatest things we can do is lay down ourselves for others. Passing on the fire, not only to our children, but to those who God brings in the way. And may forever burn. Glory of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to i uh -huh.